If you're anything like me, you might also really admire artists who can make paintings consisting of these big, sharp, bold brushstrokes. So one day I thought, what if I just force myself to paint like these artists? I've given myself five days to make five very different paintings using only hard brushes, and the results were pretty surprising. I'll also be showing what I've learned about how these artists manage to effortlessly pull off this beautiful painterly style, such that you can learn how to paint in this style as well. The main purpose of this piece was to highlight all the stuff I needed to learn how to paint using only hard brushes in a painterly style, like the eyes, clothes, skin, hair, and not the hands. But just quickly, you might be wondering, why would using only hard brushes help improve your art? Good question. Well, this challenge is perfect for training two essential principles in making good artworks. These are brush language and brushstroke confidence. This challenge improves a brush language because you have to find a way to communicate the same thing even though you are limited to strokes with a defined edges. This is a lot harder than it sounds, as you'll see later on. And brushstroke confidence is improved because every stroke you make will be visible. So you have to be confident about your decisions. This is why using only hard brushes is a perfect exercise. And this challenge is one that anyone can do. I've even included all the brushes I used in the description. So you could do the exact same study as well. But anyways, for this starting artwork, I really had no idea what I was doing. I was sort of just spamming brushstrokes down in line with the goal of making big, broad brushstrokes. So how did this artwork turn out? Well, yeah, it wasn't that great. But that's good because it marked an important starting point for this challenge. I wanted to investigate just how you could possibly paint the eyes, something so soft and blendy using only hard brushes. Luckily, I found this video here about painting the eye, and this video was perfect because they pretty much only used the hard round brush. And I'm glad I chose this piece because it taught me two important lessons slash techniques about painting, which I'll get to. You can see that somehow they managed to paint the eye such that they looked natural and soft despite basically only using the hard round brush. And as I'm doing this study, I'm legit just following along and trying to copy everything they're doing. I found that this is the best way to learn everything that the artist you're studying from is doing. The first technique I noticed is that this artist really likes to layer multiple brushstrokes on top of each other, where each brushstroke is at a relatively low opacity, around 20 to 50%. This is good for making certain areas look more blended while still preserving the details of the brushstrokes. The second crucial lesson that I learned from this piece, which I haven't really heard other people talk about, is the importance of false detail. What I mean is that including detail, which doesn't necessarily even make any sense, will still have a big impact on the perceived complexity and detail in the piece. For example, there was a whole bunch of little sharp lines that aren't really necessary in terms of the structure of the eye. Like, the eyelashes are necessary because they are a fundamental part of the eyes, but these little sharp lines served a different purpose. They were still very important because they added more perceived detail to this piece. The important thing is to make sure your strokes are hard and sharp, because otherwise, adding all these little details with soft strokes will still end up making the piece feel soft and muddy. So this is an important use case for hard brushes. Overall, I'm pretty happy with how this turned out because the eyes look very soft and blended together. But if you zoom in and look real close, then you're still able to make out the individual brush strokes. So with my new arms and knowledge, I decided to draw the second eye. Yeah, never mind. I wanted to learn how they painted the hand this piece and I ended up learning some pretty unexpected things, certainly a lot more than I thought I would. My approach for this was basically just to spam this one brush while still keeping in mind the overall form and values of the hair, which are the two most important things to keep track of when painting hair. This brush allowed me to get the finer details of the hair while still keeping in line with the painterly aesthetic. You can see that the main painterly feel from this piece comes from the distinct brushstrokes you're able to individually make out in the hair. 
which is why I wanted to replicate. I made it a good way through this piece, pretty happy with my pace at this stage, and then I decided to redo the hair. Because I'm not sure if you guys get this as well, but it suddenly felt like I was seeing my painting for the first time, and I realized that it looked nothing like the reference. But painting the hair twice was a very good learning experience, and it taught me a lot about why my first attempt looked so wrong. Firstly, I was bad at communicating the overall form of the hair. If you were to try and break the hair down into segments, you would get this and this maybe or this. So it's really no wonder the hair looked so messy and unrefined. Remember how I said form is one of the most important things to keep track of when painting hair? Well, it seems like I just completely ignored that while I was mindlessly painting this piece. Secondly, I had way too many small strands. This ties in with the problem of the form of the hair. When painting hair, you always want to stick with big chunks as much as possible. And you'll always hear about how painting individual strands is a big no-no. So even though the reference seemed to be made out of lots of tiny hair strands, if you look closely, you can tell that these strands are still part of larger chunks of hair, and thus is still staying true to the principle of painting hair as bigger chunks. Before repainting the hair, I did try removing some parts of the hair to give it more form and make the chunks more apparent. But yeah. So I redid the hair, paying close attention to each of my brush strokes, and I think this is a lot better. With the skin, I laid it strokes like I did with the eye video, and tried to keep it as simple as possible. I was going to add the butterflies because it would have made this piece look much better, but then I realized that I had no idea how to paint butterflies. So yeah, this is the finished piece. Not as happy with this as I was with the next few pieces, but it still taught me a lot. Now that I had the eyes down and the hair down, the next step was naturally clothes. You can see that they rendered the clothes and hair in a beautiful way where you can truly make out each and every brushstroke. And there's so much color variation, yet it still all feels cohesive somehow. So I really wanted to learn, what is the technique they used for the clothes and the hair in this painting? And this painting ended up being one where I had a pretty major breakthrough for this challenge. While studying this painting, I learned that one crucial element behind why everything is still cohesive is the clear attention to values throughout the painting. If we turn this to grayscale, we can more clearly see that Despite the wide range of colors and brushstrokes made, there is still a very clear and consistent message with the lighting. We have a strong primary light here and a secondary light here, and this is what provides some of the color variations, since we can subconsciously tell that there's an orange light here and a blue light here. And in regards to the wide range of brushstrokes used, it seems that this is following the principle that we learned from the eye painting where we can still use false detail to increase the perceived detail and complexity in this piece. You can see the vast amount of very sharp and distinct lines present in the painting, which was a very, very fun thing to paint. So I tried to keep all of this in mind as I was painting, and I frequently switched to grayscale to monitor my values. The painting process was all about working from big shapes to small, and constantly thinking about the roles of values and hues. It was very hard not to be overwhelmed by the hair in this piece. Usually for hair, especially anime hair, you can break it down in terms of a primary shadow, a transitioning shadow, and highlights, along with some extra hair strands to add details. But there were so many brush strokes, different hues, and different values in this hair. But I still tried to do a similar thing, I pinned down one color at a time and painted everywhere I could see that made sense for the color to be there. As I was finishing up this painting, I made a breakthrough and managed to actually formulate a concrete phrase for what I was doing. Basically, the technique for this type of painterly style is just two steps. Firstly, we use big simplified brush strokes to communicate values and hues. Secondly, we add some false detail using smaller, hard brushes. This sounds simple, and it is, although a little oversimplified, but it was quite an important breakthrough in my understanding of this style, 
and now it feels less like I am just randomly spamming brushstrokes while mindlessly following along with the reference. Obviously, not every painting will follow this very general rule, but this is a trend that I've noticed in the paintings I've done for this challenge. Once you get this key takeaway combination of ideas slash techniques down, it becomes quite a lot easier to analyze and replicate this painterly style. This piece took me quite a while, but overall I was pretty happy with the product and I can really feel the knowledge I've learned through this challenge start to add up together. For the final day, I wanted to combine everything I've learned into this one piece. This would be the big piece that ties everything together. Little did I know how much of a struggle this painting would be. This painting by BM intrigued me because of the way you can make out each and every brushstroke, even for the face, which is such a hard thing to render using only hard brushes because of the softness of faces. So I just knew that I should study this piece. As I was painting, one crucial why the hell didn't I do this earlier lesson that I learned in the middle of this painting was just how much easier it is to get the anatomy and the color of a study correct when you have the picture you're studying from right next to your painting. This lesson didn't really have much to do with this painting itself, but this is just such a universal lesson and it's something that I'm definitely going to apply to all my future paintings. And this is how I was able to better see just how astray I had gone from the reference image as I was rendering this part of the hair. Also, this is why you always got to be careful with what canvas size you choose. Cause like, what even is this? I might as well be doing pixel art at this point. Anyways, what I learned from this piece about how to paint the skin in this style is that this is just a matter of communicating only what is necessary, i.e. simplifying the important information into as few shapes and brush strokes as possible. The important information for the skin, and basically anything you want to paint for that matter, is values and hues. What this means in this painting is that if you turn the painting to grayscale, all the values should still make sense in accordance with the form of the object and the lighting situation. In terms of hues, this is about communicating the ambient lighting in the scene. For example, on the arms, these two big brushstrokes were used to communicate the blue ambient lighting in the scene. You can faintly see this on the face as well. But BM still spammed a lot of brushstrokes for the hair, and my technique for painting the hair was basically the same as the previous piece. And now finally, the painting was done. Overall, this painting took me a little bit of time. It became super tedious towards the end as I was making so many little brushstrokes to make the painting look better and more detailed, applying the technique I learned in my eye painting. And also, the reference itself followed this principle, where it had a whole bunch of little sharp lines, especially for the hair. Anyways, even though this was pretty tedious, I'm quite happy with how this piece turned out. And I feel like I've already learned a tremendous amount from just these few paintings. I was really quite surprised by how much I learned through this challenge. And I feel so much more confident with using hard brushes now. I highly recommend you guys try this challenge as well. If you enjoyed this video, I've got another similar video coming up. So be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on that. But for now, thanks for watching.